Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a Steel Series Apex Pro TKL. This is a 10 keyless version of Steel Series Premium Gaming Keyboard. This is an unboxing video and review where I'll be talking to you about what this keyboard's like to use. Now, I've previously tried out the full size version of the Apex Pro, and I wanted to try the TKL version to be able to say what the differences are and how it stacks up with other TKL keyboards I've tried out recently including the likes of Razer's Huntsman Tournament Edition, the Logitech G915 TKL and some others that are coming soon. So be sure to subscribe and check out the description for links to those videos and other ones related to this including a separate one that I'll do and just the keyboard actuation sounds. I want to talk to you about the highlights of this keyboard because the Apex Pro TKL is just as wonderful as the full size variant although obviously it comes with a more compact form factor because it hasn't got that numpad and other buttons on the side however it still boasts a number of really awesome features to it that include that OLED screen and the Omnipoint adjustable mechanical switches which allow you to customize the actuation level between 0.4 millimeters and 3.6 millimeters. This keyboard boasts, as Steel Series put it, eight times faster response, five times the faster actuation speed and two times the durability of other gaming keyboards. And it's really interesting in that it has that adjustable mechanical switch design which I've not seen elsewhere and I don't know if it exists on other keyboards. It's a really intelligent system because it basically means you don't need to worry about what key switches you're purchasing because you're getting ones that you can customize the levels on. So if you're not too sure about what actuation level you want, this keyboard is really interesting because you can set the levels and not only that, you can set them at different levels for different keys on the keyboard. Now I'm gonna show you that highlight as I go through and talk to you about it and show you off in the software and just how that works and how you adjust it and how you tweak it, as well as the other highlights to it. Now this keyboard comes with a really interesting design as well in that it has a nice, aircraft grade aluminium frame good solid design to it and a detachable wrist rest that's held on with magnets and it has a really interesting rubbery feel to it it's not padded particularly but it's got a very interesting texture rubber surface that's pleasant on the wrists and on the fingertips and that sort of rubbery feeling goes onto the keys themselves that's not to say that the keycaps are rubberized in any way they're not like rubber keycaps they are still plastic but they are interesting in the feel the touch and feel of them on your fingers and i feel like this is a fairly unique keyboard setup i've not really tried many like it in that way it has a very soft feeling to it and really comfortable to use and i've enjoyed the tkl version as much as i did the full size variant in both gaming and everyday typing it has a number of other highlights to it as well that include lift up feet and a nice cable management system underneath as you can see you can adjust the cabling on you can have it coming out of the right hand side the left hand side or the middle so you can set it up in the way you want you will also note the dual cable system that i'll show you a bit more in a minute which allows for pass through so you've got usb pass through on the rear of this keyboard as well so that means you can plug in headset mouse or whatever else you want on it now when you get out of the box it's fairly underwhelming in terms of what it looks like it's not going to blow your socks off in its design initially until you plug it in and as you saw from the beginning clip of this video the lighting on this keyboard is also fantastic the apex pro when i saw it would had some of the most fantastic lighting that i've seen on a gaming keyboard and that still remains true now i've seen a fair few different keyboards with some really nice lighting on them the hyperx alloy elite 2 for example fantastic Rockat's Vulcan 122, really good looking, but the Steel Series shines for RGB lighting, and I'll show you why later on, but basically because you can layer lighting on top of one another with static lighting and reactive effects that result in a really nice looking keyboard. Now, as I said, this keyboard is comfortable to use for everyday typing. I'll leave all the specifications in the description, but those mechanical switches that you can adjust the actuation on means that you can change it and set it up with different profiles so you can have faster actuation for gaming and maybe harder pressing for everyday typing and you can then switch between profiles on the keyboard to tweak that the way you want it or you could just get the level and set it the way you want it and then use it in that way all the time and i found that just messing about with that and tweaking it is a lot of fun to play around with but even as standard even just default out of the box 
It's set to medium actuation level and it's very comfortable to use and really good for gaming. It reacts really well, plays really nicely and looks fantastic too. It's a really solid built piece of kit, a very premium quality design to it, comfortable, easy on the eye, not too obnoxious in the amount of noise level that you get from the key presses and the result is a really good looking keyboard that's fun to use and nice to have about as well. And I really like the TKL version, I've said in previous videos I'm not really a fan of TKL keyboards, I'm starting to enjoy them more now, I still prefer to have the numpad but if you are wondering about the Apex Pro and what the TKL version is like in comparison, they're both very good keyboards and worth considering. Now one thing I was saying earlier on is that this keyboard has this detachable wrist rest with a rubber feel on it and the keycaps do as well. One thing I noticed quite quickly and I'm going to show you in a second is just how easily that rubberized finish picks up dust and dirt. You can see a close-up with a macro lens shows little fragments of material and such. Now this probably makes it look worse than it actually is but it's worth noting that there's kind of a magnet for these things and they do pull in dust particles and fiber and things like that onto the wrist rest. The keyboard itself doesn't seem to suffer from it as much and it still looks pretty decent now, although I have found that some of the oils from my fingers end up on the keycaps, which is a problem I've seen with the Logitech G915 TKL and the black variant of that as well. But again, it can just be cleaned and return to its former glory quite easily. As you can see, with the lighting off, as I said earlier, it doesn't look all that amazing. One thing you will note though, is that the keycaps are very nice in terms of the etching on them. So one of the complaints I had about Razer's variant was that the keycaps weren't very well etched, so the RGB lighting didn't shine through well, so you couldn't see what the lettering was particularly easily. Same thing I said about the G915 TKL, when the RGB lighting was off, you couldn't really see what the letters were. Not a problem with the SteelSeries Apex Pro, really well designed in that way. Now, on the rear of the keyboard, you have the USB pass-through port, you also have a volume control wheel for your multimedia, playing back music and such. Very small affair, doesn't need to be massive. And the reason it's tiny is because you'll note the little display next to that, and I'll show you that in a minute and what you can do with that. Basically, easy access to a volume wheel. And there's also a media playback button up there too, that you can press, and then you can use that button to then do various things in terms of playing back the audio. So a single press, for example, will play music. I press it again and it will pause it. If you double tap, it'll skip to the next song. If you triple tap it, it will go back to the previous track. And that's a nice little simple adjustment as well. Now, as I was saying, the keyboard itself has two USB connections. They're clearly marked and you can see one is for the keyboard and then one is to pass through. So if you plug them both in, you obviously have the ability to plug something into the rear, but you don't need to plug them both in if you're not gonna use the pass through. Once you do plug it in, you get to enjoy some really nice RGB lighting with a number of different effects available. But as standard, you can see it's got a good glow to it during the day and lets off a good amount of light at night as well. The reactions of the keys, you can see the reactive effects here in action. I'll go into these in a bit more depth in the software in a minute. But essentially, you can set up different layers of either reactive effects or base layers of colors, and then have reactive effects on top of them, resulting in some nice typing experiences where you can basically have colors flowing from your fingers. And they'll do it in a line, or they'll do it and then fade away on the keys you've pressed and other things. And I've seen effects like that on other keyboards, but it's done really well with this one. And you'll see from the housing, you get a nice bit of light bleed all around the edges too. And it looks fantastic in that way. Now up close with the little display, I said in the previous video and I'll say it again, unfortunately, I feel like this display is a kind of a gimmick. It does display some pretty nifty information including things like GPU, CPU, and RAM usage, temperatures and things like that. And you can monitor your performance of such things from there, which is pretty nifty. With the original Apex Pro, you could also access Spotify 
and get data on what was playing back from that. But they've actually removed that now for some reason. I don't know why you can't use that anymore, which is a real shame. But there are a variety of other things you can do. You can customize the Steel Series logo and put your own logo on there. You can put little GIFs in there and do things like that. You can also attach Discord to it so you can see who's talking in your Discord channel, see when a user joins and leaves and whether you're muted and things like that. But the problem I have with it is the way it's set. If you have the keyboard laying flat on your desk, unless you're sitting bolt upright and basically over your keyboard, you can't really see that screen very easily. Now, if you use the feet to raise the keyboard up, it is a bit more visible. But when it's laying flat on the desk, it's kind of out of view. And I think that's a shame. It is a nice little screen. It's a nice little addition. It's certainly not something you see on many keyboards but it is kind of a gimmick in that way. Close up with the keycaps again, and you can see the design and the overall look and feel of them. It is a really nice looking keyboard. It's very hard to do it justice, but I think it looks fantastic from a variety of different angles, and it feels and looks great too. And you are getting a very premium design from this one, as I said before. Now, if we spend a bit more time talking about the keycaps, now, as I said, I'm gonna do a video separately with just the noise of the keycaps and the actuation of them so you can hear it without me talking over the top. But I haven't found them to be obnoxious. They're a good level. They're not quite as quiet as some of the ones I've tried. Silent keys, for example. But they're certainly not as loud as browns or blues. And the difference between them is like not all the keys on the keyboard are the Omnipoint adjustable mechanical switches. But you can adjust the main keyboard lineup and I'll show you what that means in a minute but basically within the software you can adjust all the main keys that you would use just not the directional keys and the function keys and such and you can see the difference in the key design here as well so the adjustable ones are white and you'll see that within the software too and you can basically adjust the level where these actuate so what that means is essentially if you set them to the lowest possible actuation level you only have to have a very gentle touch on the key in order for it to actuate which means a stroke or a very gentle press will result in that actuating and firing the key press immediately and you can then adjust it the other way obviously you can make it so that you have to press the key all the way in for it to actuate and you can change all the important keys on the keyboard to customize those in that way and that's really nice it's not something you'll see elsewhere another thing that steel series have got here because it's a tkl version obviously you lose some of the keys but what they've done is they've put them into another level if you press this steel series button at the bottom here which essentially doubles as a function key as you'd see it on other keyboards you get the F9, F10, F11, and F12 buttons. You can see they have a secondary action. F9 is a profile switching. F10 is macro recording. F11 and F12 adjust the brightness of the keys. You'll notice that the keys change color when you do that, so you can see which ones have that secondary action. There's more on this in the software in a minute, so stick with me because I'm going to show you that you can also adjust all the keys on the keyboard to potentially have a secondary action, which is also really neat up close shot of the keycaps and you can see the way the lighting works fairly traditional but that clear housing means that you get a nice bit of light bleed from the keycaps and a really good result within the steel series engine you can customize the keys you'll see that you can reprogram every key on the keyboard in here and you can do that in a variety of different ways there's lots of different key actions that you can set up you can just change it between key presses do commands navigation arrows all sorts of other things you can set up single binds with a quick record button that at the top which basically allows you to just put in whatever action you want and record that so for example i'm just going to set caps lock to be r instead of caps lock and then when you've saved that action that caps lock will then become the other key press or whatever else you want it to be. I really hate the caps lock key. I don't really like it on my keyboard, so it's nice to be able to change it to something else. R for reload, you might use that. I don't know, you might want to use it for another action. And you can also change to have macros. You'll see that you can set macros in here and you can record macros and set up your own elsewhere as well. And I'll show you how to record those in a second. 
but basically what this means is you can customize any of the keys really easily and you see how simple that process is too. It's also worth noting that you can even deactivate those keys too so you can just fully deactivate the caps lock key and stop it from even activating and doing anything in the first place anyway. Now the meta bindings is a point that I was talking about earlier which makes it really interesting is that when you're holding that function key as I said the F9, F10, F11 and F12 buttons are standard to have a secondary action but what you'll notice is that F8 I have bound to print screen because there's no print screen button on the keyboard as standard and I want to be able to capture screenshots so now what I've done is I've bound F8 so when I press that still series button I then compress F8 and that takes a screenshot you can do this with any key on the keyboard so you can customize any key on your keyboard to have a secondary action as long as you're pressing that steel series button which means that you can basically set up for an extra layer of button presses really easily and without much hassle at all as long as you remember what's what because there's no markings on the keys to let you know what that secondary action is so you can't get any sort of feedback from the keyboard on what that is but you can really easily change that and that's fantastic because it basically means you can add loads of extra key presses in now with the actuation section you'll see the bit that i've got highlighted as orange those are the keys that you can change the actuation level on and you basically have a gauge between one and ten with one being the shortest actuation level and ten being the longest and then you can go in and you can pick individual keys. In my case, I've got WASD here, and it's set to five as standard, which is a fairly standard press. You put it in, it just activates. But if you put it all the way down to 10, you really have to press those keys in all the way down in order for them to respond to your presses. If you go the other way, completely the other way to one, that makes it a very short press, a very light touch, and it activates almost immediately. It's basically as soon as you touch your fingers to the keyboard and this responds really quickly. Now you can do this across all those keys in the main area of the keyboard that I showed you highlighted and you can change them individually between each of them as well. So for example if I click on J you can see that's set to 5, I can put it to 10. If I click back to S again that's still on 1 so you can actually change between different keys. You might not want to do it at that level uh, or maybe you just want to keep WASD which is obviously the gaming movement low as possible and change the other ones to be higher. Now illumination is something I've already shown you earlier on with the colors and how they respond in real life but this is how you do it in the SteelSeries engine software. You can set a single base color as your base effect and then have reactive layers on top of that. You'll note that audio visualizer is currently interfering with this and I'll talk to you a bit more about that in a minute. But the result is you can have either a base layer or you can have various different effects. There are a number of different effects including these funky looking ones with multiple different colors across the keyboard and ones that change color as they move their way across the board as well. And the striking in their design, I found when I looked at the original Apex Pro that I really liked the design of the Steel Series RGB lighting and the same is true with the Apex Pro TKL. It's a very nice looking keyboard in this way and the customization of the RGB lighting is fantastic as well. You can see that you have various different levels of it and it looks great. There are reactive ones so you can have these very nice looking base effects and then you can layer reactive effects on top of it. This simple one for example just makes the keys that you've pressed change colour and then they just fade back to the previous colour. You can also get the entire keyboard to react so if I press it you have light shooting out from that one across all the other keys and you can see that basically changes the light of that. Could be a bit distracting if you're using it especially if you're on a zoom call at the time and it's reflecting into that but it is really nice to be able to just tweak the lighting in a variety of ways like this and there's so many different customization options and it really shines and it looks fantastic. One of my favorite keyboards in terms of RGB lighting because of the customization and the way it reacts too and there's even more that you can do on that I'll show you in a second as well but the basic effects you'll see you have a number of different effects that you can change between in here includes things like electric orange, chasing ghosts, haze, vapor dreams, warp drive and more or you could just have a static standard base color and then reactive layer. You'll note you can also choose an AFK effect, which I've got it set so that you can basically get it to turn off the RGB lighting when it's not in use and the keyboard will just go black, which is great because if you leave the room, 
step away from your PC to go get some lunch or something, for example, or um, freshen up, and you might find that your keyboard is lighting up the room with various different effects, and it doesn't need to be, so this doesn't do that, and then you can make it so it just turns that off, which is nice. Here you can see what I was talking about earlier on, that you can customise the display with your own logo and you can choose from there. Now if you go into the SteelSeries engine section with the apps, you'll see there are a number of different apps that work with this keyboard. You have the Prism Sync, which basically syncs up your RGB lighting across various different Steel Series products. If you have a headset, keyboard, mouse and other things, you can get them to sync up there. The Discord one that you can see here that I showed you earlier on, you can turn on and configure. You have to link it with your Discord account, but then basically that lets you set up various different notifications on the screen to get notified of when things are happening. And you can choose from various different things, like as I was saying, when someone leaves and joins the channel where certain people are talking, whatever else, that will display on the screen. Image Sync is another interesting one, which basically allows you to upload or use default GIFs. So different files that are moving, colorful files, you can put them into the software, load them in and then apply them. And what that does is that then use that effect and it puts it onto the keyboard. So in this case, I've got a fire one here. Basically the keyboard then glows red and orange and flickers around and basically it's trying to replicate the colors and movement of the GIF on the keyboard, on the keys itself. You'll see there's another one for like snake with the white lines falling down the keyboard. You can do that. You can upload your own and customize it, but you do need to make sure you've got the right size. System monitor, again, this goes in the display and that shows you all the different things like the GPU usage that I was talking about earlier, RAM usage, how much you get on there, what percentage of that's used. Tidal uses the display to let you know what's playing and then you'll see that the Steel Series engine also has a number of different things customized from different games where it'll take over either the keyboard or the display and result in some interesting effects and there are other ones that are always getting updated so the end result as you can see is a really interesting keyboard with numerous different features it can be really customized not only in terms of rgb lighting but in terms of key actuation the macros and key setup that you have on it the secondary layer of key presses there are endless things that you can do with this keyboard it's really nice looking premium comfortable to use, fantastic to customize, really great keyboard. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.